Hey, you made it. We've arrived at the fourth and final module, which brings us to a question. What else is out there? In the short time I've spent as a professional librarian, there has been an explosion of activity in the world of digital archives. It's been incredibly encouraging to watch recent digital archives projects open up some amazing collections on the web. But how can digital collections like these help us tell our family stories? We'll answer this question as we get lost in the digital archives in Module 4. I'm Kyle Denlinger. Welcome back to RootsMOOC. Before we get going on Module 4, let's recap what we learned in the last module. We learned that not everything is online. Some of the most important documents to your genealogy research are held by libraries, archives, and historical societies, and they're frequently only available in print or a microfilm. However, we learned to tap into the system by exploring the resources and services that libraries provide for their users. If you haven't planned a visit or contacted a librarian yet, we hope you will soon. If you were able to pay a visit to your genealogy research library, we'd love to hear about it. I'll be sharing my own experiences in the discussion board. I hope to see you there. If you leave Module 4 feeling like you've tried drinking from a fire hose, there's a good reason for that. There's just so much information coming available through a number of digitization initiatives that it might be difficult to know even how to get started. In this module, we'll explore how to get started with some of the big ones, such as the Digital Public Library of America, as well as those you might find from your state library, state archives, or state historical society. The things we'll find range from marriage announcements to naturalization records to digitized high school yearbooks and beyond. These sources will surely help us all fill in gaps in our research and provide rich detail for our family stories. I hope you enjoy Module 4.